For this project, we're going to be focusing in on small details. We're going to take something that is small and make it larger than life size. So I'm going to start by drawing a magnifying glass. I just draw a big circle. I put a little highlight on there to show there's glass. I'm going to draw a handle. I'm even going to draw a little hand sort of grabbing the handle of the magnifying glass. And then after that, I'm going to start to draw details, like what would be inside the magnifying glass. I'm going to draw a nice big picture of a bee, like I'm focusing in on like a macro shot of a bee. Now mine is obviously not going to be photorealistic, but I want you to think about all the different features that you can add to it um, to get it a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to draw not just like uh, an oval with stripes on it and call it a bee. I'm going to draw the different parts of it. I've got its head, I've got its thorax, I've got the legs, I've got the, the wings, I've got the compound eye, I've got the antennae. Um, hopefully all of that is correct. I really should have done some research and, um, you know, been more scientific about this instead of just working from imagination but that's kind of how I imagine a bee and if that's how you imagine a bug that's good enough I'm not going to I'm not going to graded on the scientific accuracy. But I do want you to show something that is larger than life size under the magnifying glass and then for context show it closer to life size in the background. So in the background in the negative space around the magnifying glass I've got smaller flowers and I've got um, they're less detailed. I've got a ladybug on a leaf. So that gives us a sense of scale and proportion here and in, in our picture we can see things that are not magnified and we see the portion that is magnified. Um, I always like to add more details and so I'm adding patterns on my on my uh, magnifying glass. I'm adding different types of line designs. You can put what you want into your pictures. Um, I just personally find it very satisfying to see more detailed lines. I, I love to add more and more and more to my picture and I also find it very just relaxing to be drawing these repetitive designs. Um, there's something very soothing about the the familiar and the repetition in there. So that's an element that I add to mine. Uh, you don't have to in yours, just like you don't have to paint yours. You have your choice of media while we're in remote learning, but I wanted to make sure that I'm showing and demonstrating some different things beyond just markers and crayons, so I'm painting mine with watercolors. When I paint with watercolors, one thing I always keep in mind is watercolor paints need water. Water is in the name for a reason because it becomes a paint when you add the water, when you mix the water to the pigment, that's the colored stuff in your paint set. Um, watercolor paints, really any paints, are a solution. They're, they are a, a combination of different things. And the water is one part of that chemical solution. So you want to pay attention to the water because the amount of water that you put in there will make a difference. Um, the more water you have, the more transparent the colors are because you're thinning out the pigment. It means you're getting less color into your, your um, paint solution, meaning you're going to see through to the white of the paper underneath. It's going to make it look a little bit more pale. If you have too much water, it's going to spread and drip into areas you don't want it to be. If you don't have enough water, um, it's going to be hard to spread the paint. So as I'm, as I'm doing this, I am paying attention to how wet my brush is. Sometimes I'll actually paint over some areas with just water to thin it out, or sometimes I'll use a paper towel to soak up some of the paint and take away some of the paint and make it a lighter, more pale color. Uh, another technique you can use is you can layer one color on top of another to blend and um, create new and different colors or different shades of the same color. Uh, so I used some orange and yellow in the flower detail. I usually start off keeping it a little bit more pale and then I add more color. I layer more color in to make it brighter and bolder. So you can see inside the detail of the, the magnifying glass, I'm getting that flower a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder by layering the colors. I want that to be the focal point. I want that to be the emphasis. So that's going to be a little bit more detailed. And then the background, I want it to be a little bit fuzzier and out of focus. So I'm just putting little dots and little streaks of yellows and greens and blues to get that look of like 
like uh, leaves and grass and that that texture that's a little bit out of focus in the background and make sure that my picture of my giant bee on the flower really stands out and seems more developed and it it pulls the viewer's attention there because it is brighter bolder and more detailed it it tells us that's the focal point that's what we should be focused on now for your picture of course you don't have to draw a bee landing on a flower what i want to see from your work is i want to see something larger than life size i want you to take a small bug or something of that scale and put it under a magnifying glass draw a magnifying glass draw something that is normally very small, draw it larger than life size in the magnifying glass so that you can focus on all those little details that often go unnoticed.